this week on Not Just Another Sex Podcast. I also want to talk about, because I know you've probably seen the line when they say, you know, if you poly, you probably ugly. You probably look like this. And I be seeing it on Twitter. And it it be some folks in the car. And I ain't saying they my cup of tea. They might be somebody's cup of tequila. I have no idea. But it, it don't look good. And I'm like, okay. It don't. It, it, don't. it don't look good. And I, and I leave it alone because I'm like, this is what y'all choosing. But I need to let the world know right now. What is your relationship style? Or what do you I'm a, label? I'm ethically non-monogamous. And you know what I heard someone say the other day is that they had to take off the ethical. They said, because who said that it's unethical if I choose to be now non monogamy is not unethical. We say it for the other people who assume this, that this is true. You know, and this I, I love I loved that perspective. And do you consider yourself polyamorous? I would only say no because it's not a requirement for me. Like that's not my I'm fluid when it comes to relationships. The ethics is way more important than, than more than non -monogamy. anything. Yeah. I, I feel like I relate more to polyamory because I have the ability to love multiple people. But I always come forth with who I am. Like, this is who I am, which that's means true. it is possible for me. I need you to know that I'm not a person that's like, oh, you the end all be all. If I love you, I do love you. Someone else coming into that doesn't change that for me. But I need you to know. You need to know I'm bisexual. I think you need to know that I eat coochie. Hey, sugar. I feel like there are so many different things that I need to learn as an adult. I'm this nasty on a regular day, like on a Tuesday. I am your host, Samaya Burton, and don't worry, it's not just another sex podcast. Welcome back to Not Just Another Sex Podcast. I am your host, Samaya, and I know I'm always excited, but okay, but I'm really excited about today's episode because I saw this. You know what I'm saying? The, the masturbating and manifesting has been working. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? R DJing the coochie. Word. Is this is was, working. This was brought on by absolutely. Okay, rub one All out right. for you. Okay, look here, y'all. I have Trip Fontaine on the show today, and I am so excited. I love your work. I, I love your work. Um, and and say hello to the folks. What up? Folks, I don't know which one of these cameras is going to be on me, but what's happening? <laughs> you they, they it's yours. It's all you. This is all you. What up, though? Yes. Um, well, I'm super excited because we have you here today, and I'm super excited around all of it. It's it's like threefold. So Tripp is on the show today, one, because I needed him as a guest. I've loved your work for years. Um, but also, he has come out with his second book, A Ghetto Called Eden. Correct. That's some player shit. Like that. That I, what did I say the first time I said, "Yo, that's some. That's some fly yeah. poet. It's, it's real poetic. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Almost like it's your job or something. I it's, know, right? It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. Um, and also, he is the first um, event that we are hosting at the Something Extraordinary Content House. His book release party is being hosted with us, and you probably will listen to this when it's over because the party is tonight, but the energy is here. The energy is here. And I'm so, so, so excited um, for that and to bring this into fruition and wrapping, you know, just, I'm, I'm really grateful that you're sharing your moment with us. And it, it, it means so much. I've, I've wanted to do this. I've wanted to, I've wanted to do this and I'm, I'm so excited. So, cool. all right. He's like, all right, all right, okay. So we're going to get started with the show, then we're going to let you introduce yourself, and we're going to get into it, yeah. all right? Okay, so the adult tip of the day, y'all, we got to start the episode with this, because adulting is not easy, and there are no directions to that thing, and we just want to teach you that it's just one little thing that you can focus on or just put in your mind and it may make you a little bit better every day, whether it's a, my therapist says, or here's a life hack or whatever. Um, just, just a little bit each day. And so the adult tip of the day is when you don't ask for a lot, you don't receive a lot. And that's something that we need to understand about this life. And our first conversation, you and I, um, where, you know, when I called and I was like, Hey, I would love to host, you know, this and, all that you um you had an element of really you you want to do that all right I, you know and um there are some 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 similarities um with I know that how we were raised and where we come from and Drake breaking generational patterns doing something that's never been done doing things for the community and things like that um where I feel like I had to learn to be specific and be picky and ask for every single thing you know what I mean has that has that been something that has come up for you um, in, in various ways, um, 
I think it's a constant battle though, because a lot of what I could ask for is ego, and it's not to say it's not valid, right? But mm-hmm. you, you, your ego is a part of you. You know, it's, the, it's your understanding, your experience. But then there's also the gratitude um, and having to check with myself to see am I <clears throat> am I shortchanging myself or am I just grateful that the opportunity is here? Uh, and that's that's a constant battle. So I, I mean, I say it always comes up in that regard to where I'm like, all right, bro. Yeah, you could ask for more, but where is that coming from? Why? Um, yeah, What's like the behind it. And then, yeah, you could say something, and if you do, where is that coming from? If you don't, where is that coming from? So I, I don't think it's any one particular place that shows up. It's always a constant battle from impressions made from childhood, or or in different business scenarios where things didn't work out the way I wanted to. Um, all of those things affect how I, how I move. So I've found that some of the people that I hold to the highest regard, not because of the expectations that I put on them, but the way that I see their work, they they aren't always seen or that's not where the light is, is shined. And so like th- that was really important to me with SC Content House was to shine the light where I think that it should be. And going through that process more, which is what does that look like asking for more and what should those you know things be? And so I just wanna share a couple of steps. Um, for me, I never say yes the same day anymore. I take time. Even if I know that my answer is yes, I just want to take a moment because sometimes I respond out of excitement and it's just like, yeah. And it's like, I haven't even checked in with my own boundaries. Like, do I need something? Is there, you know, what do I need to make this work? Or did I just say yes? Um, and also when I slip up and I say yes too fast, I always say, you know, hey, actually, let me slow down. Let me make sure that this works, but I'm very excited about this opportunity, but I need to check in with self and make sure that's good and being more honest about that. Um, And I also say when I don't know. I say when I don't know so I can ask somebody else or either I can say, you know what, I actually don't know what I should be asking for or how to even go about it. And I ask somebody, even if it's not in the field, just as close as I can get, because I realize that is a version of me asking for what I want. Asking for help is a, is a, you know what I'm saying? Like a stepping stone to that. And I, I've I've been running into so many creators that I I hold into uh, you know hold a high regard like yourself and we all need that we all need that especially if success or is new if if it's new if if you're the first one to do it if you don't know how it's been done or you're walking an uncharted path um, a lot of us go through that and so the adult tip of the day is when you don't ask for a lot you don't receive a lot so don't worry about all that shit. Ask the questions you need to ask. Wait a second. Um, because you're worth it. You know what I'm saying? Ask for what you want so that way it's it's worth it for you, you know? All right. So that's the adult tip of the day. Thank you very much for chiming in on that. Hey, you guys. It's your host, Samaya. And for those of you who didn't know, I'm also the CEO and founder of Sexual Essentials. One of my favorite parts about building that brand was creating a learning platform that has over 250 workshops, interviews, and so much more. Some of my favorite components are the sex position demos. Yes, you heard that right. Demos. They're featuring some people that you may already know. Good Moms, Bad Choices has demonstrated some positions for us, as well as Dara. You remember her from our first episode. Those are some of my faves, as well as the Lingam and Yoni massages. These are great additions to add to your oral loving for your partner. Yes, I said oral loving. I'm trying to keep it clean, guys. Anyways, they are great additions and a great way to spice things up. Outside of our master classes, add one of these on to your normal routine and really wow your partner. Click the link below or in any of the links in our bio and sign up for our courses today. All right, now back to the show. Um, and today's Twitter talk. All right. So Twitter talk is where we get into the, the, the viral topics, the think pieces. We black Twitter started a lot of things. Okay. Uh, if you've seen it viral anywhere, you've seen it on TikTok, you've seen it on the gram. It probably started from Twitter. And I feel like it's very important to show some respect, put some respect on black Twitter name. Um, and so today's Twitter talk is men being called gay or being asked or questioned if they're gay in result of them not being interested in someone. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. Where someone, so like, run it down to, you know, you can give us a short version. Run it down as as to what I'm talking about here. I think every scenario has has been similar uh, where a woman is is usually the one making the advance 
And for whatever reason, whatever I got going on, I'm just not on it. And so mm -hmm. now because I'm not on her the way she expect a man to be on her or, or the way maybe men have been on her in the past, like now it's, it's gotta be something with me. You know, mm -hmm. it's either my sexuality, my preferences aren't right, or or something about my mood is not right. Whatever it is, it's, it it becomes a how how can I make him? What's wrong with him? Less of a yeah, like it got to be something with him. So I'm a chip away at him to justify how I feel about myself. Because a lot of those women, like women that do that, they get they ego inflated by men. So that's where they confidence, where they esteem come from. So when they approach a man like that and he not interested, since they ego is built or, or being validated by men, I have to invalidate this man or else that's gonna take away from me. Cause generally speaking, like men want that type of woman, I guess. But yeah, I, I had it happen. It's annoying. It's like a version of, um. It, there is no way you couldn't be interested in yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like exactly. there, there could be no way. Um, and I, I think that's very disrespectful. And you know, we talked on this before. And um, I think that it's is is mad disrespectful because it's like, and it, and it, it confuses men as well. Because yeah. a woman, I'm one of those people that I do not like people to flirt with me if I have not shown that it's reciprocal. Because now I. I didn't do anything to me. And I'm not saying like men and women shouldn't be men and women, right? right? And have that chemistry. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when people flirt too early or you're not being kind, you're really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you feeling me out and it's like when it's too early, like if you if we just met or if we're doing business or we're not talking about our natural chemistry or synastry, you know, what is it? Synastry? Synergy. Synergy. It's not coming out right. I ain't even take no drugs today, y'all. It's just... <laughs> is that the problem? You I should, what? That you might be the might, problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not lifted. So there's there's not a, a synergy or a, a, a chemistry. We're not talking about that. Like somebody just hitting on you. And I shut things down because I won't do business if I feel like you're not reading the room that clearly this is not a, yeah, a mutual not thing. You know what I'm saying? It's not the time. Um, and then for someone to ask you about your sexuality or say like, oh, well, he got to be gay. Or, oh, are you into men? Because like... Because I'm like not you, flirting with I you? I feel like you disrespecting queer men more than you are me. Like, I feel that. Because like, why? Did, what did they have to do with it? How delusional are you that you think that every man not finding you attractive is like the barometer for his whole sexuality, bro? Like, like the whole thing, you feel me? Absolutely. Like, you got to be that fire that if a dude, <laughs> if men don't universally <laughs> agree that you the one... He has to be get like, and that's you the use, only other option. You using it as an insult, yeah. Too is why I think it's yeah. You shooting at the manhood. You shooting at the manhood. And you you making queer less man is is why I think it's disrespectful. Like toward them, like you you also saying that because a man gay, like he less than, he gotta be less than to not fuck with you. It's like, bro, you're you're not just disrespectful. You just you made really this whole thing about bro. you, bro. Yeah, like you delusional. You can't. Process in your mind that a man, a straight man anyway, don't want you, wouldn't fuck with you whole time. Like you thinking like that is probably why. It, that's probably, I mean, clearly that's the problem. I mean, that, me? that's but, clearly but, the problem. Yeah, like, bruh, something off with you. Yeah, something is yeah. off. Um, and I, I just think that's always crazy because I'm like, you literally have no idea what's going on in anybody's life. They could have just had a death. They could have had a job. They could just simply not be attracted to you. You could be smacked. Like yeah. you could, I know what niggas told you in the past, but you could be smacked. And even if you're not, that ha just because you're attractive does not mean that I'm attracted. That that this has nothing to do with too. anything. I could too. just not be into hell. I could be tired. Of, or my answer could be no means no. Yeah. No means no. So... Uh, but that's the Twitter talk for today because I, I've seen that a lot where a lot of people, um, I, I, I hear it from women a lot and I don't really engage in these type of conversations because I know that if you've been delusional this long, me telling you my two cents ain't going to change nothing and I don't be having the energy. But if you've ever listened to a story where either the man was just so enamored with her, but the ones that's not and the ones that make it no not, oh uh, no, nah, because you know he got a, uh, that, like it's always something wrong with him. And it's like, it's not just like he wasn't interested. Either every man yeah. thinks you're amazing. And girl, he was just all, and mind you, I've been in a room with some of these things. I'm like, you just made that up because he just did the exact same thing with everybody. Like, don't get me wrong. I could see how you can mistake it as flirting or whatever. He is very kind. You're right. 
But he also did that to everybody in the room or it wasn't as special, which you just made this man out to be thirsty. And, and he just said, hey, excuse me, miss, you know where the bathroom is? <laughs> I, I'm going to just say amongst my my friends, my circle. Okay. Because it's some wild dudes out there, so I ain't going to say they don't exist. Amongst my circle and the men that I generally walk with, I ain't ever heard no nigga say, oh, she must be gay, bro. She told me that. <laughs> She ain't wanna give me her number. She must, she must. It like must women. be something wrong. I ain't never, I ain't saying them type of men don't exist. But women I, can't I, take I, the some L. Some of y'all dudes really be wild, bro. I'll be in the social media comments. Some of y'all, I'll be seeing how you look and what you got going on based on, and, and then seeing what you say to these women, you fooling. And whoever you is, I want you to wear the shoe and tie it up. However, the cats that I'll be rolling with, I ain't never met no nigga so high up on his horse that he felt like a chick couldn't be attracted to men because she wasn't attracted she only like women. to him. Yes, I agree. That is a huge red flag. So, ladies, this is this one is for y'all, okay? Because, you know, negativity makes your pussy dry. This is a form, a form of, of negativity to me. You got to be able to take that L, okay? All right? Grab the shirt on the website. We're going to always shameless plug it, ain't we? All right, let's get into it. All right, so... Uh, that is the Twitter vlog for today. Thank you for joining me, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank sure. you. Um, so I want to, I want you to tell the world who you are, but I would like to let them know you are an author, you're a poet, you're a community activist, you are a two-time author, you are a host on tonight's conversation podcast, and all around that guy, you know, from what we have seen. And so we're gonna dig a little more into that today, but I would like you to tell me who you are or tell us who you are. Um, Trip Fontaine, poet, uh, space maker, family member, uh, brother, uncle, producer. Uh, I do a lot of things, man. I'm a professional human. A professional um, human. I don't need that on a do, shirt. Uh, I don't do too much outside <laughs> of what everybody else do. I just choose to do it on purpose. Everybody, everybody creative. You feel me? Everybody just don't obey that. So I'm a, I'm a student to my many crafts. This is why you're here today. I like it. I like <laughs> it. Um, it's, it's the thought, and you, and you do have a gift, and I, I, I enjoy your gift, and so I do appreciate you for giving it to the world. Um, I would like to talk, start with um, your TEDx talk. Mm -hmm. When I first watched it, it was like, oh, this is fun. And it got dark real fast. <laughs> it got dark real fast and in a hurry. And it and it and it did what it was supposed to do. It as a as a mother of a of a a black son, you know, as a of a black boy, um, a child at that. Um, if you guys haven't listened, we would drop that link below. But it got into your first encounter um with the police at what the ripe age of what, 13, 14? 13. 13. Yeah. Um, and I want to ask you. Was that a catalyst in you choosing to do what you do now? Or do you think that that is a part of the story about the purpose? That's not really where it's set up because you have multiple in what you show on social media and in your work. I've seen how you speak out for black men and how you protect black women with your words um, and how you enlighten others. But those things are still built off the difficulties around being a black man. Right. And so where do you think your story of difficulty and the traumas that that comes with and where your purpose and the other things you want to do, like, do you think that they mesh together or do you think that those things are a part of, or do you ever feel like even the, the title of your book, a ghetto called Eden, do you think that will always be a part or do you see it change? It's so many things about that, but it's always been so interesting to me because everything that you say and teach it still encompasses what you are going, like you said, a professional human, what, what you're going through. Only, only story I could really tell is mine. Um, I think a lot of times we get off trying to tell other people's stories. We try to tell our story in a way that's palatable to other people or, or whatever, what have you. Um, all of this stuff is just a culmination of my story and what I've learned from it. Um, and being willing to 
first listen to because I'm the I'm the first listener of all of my work to to honestly listen to honestly tell and and then to honestly share my story um not the nice one either the the real one the one before comfortable one yeah before I edit it because I as much as I share poems I share what I'm going through in real time with people Right. Um, of course, I, I'm not going to put too much of the story out that involves other people or whatever. But I mean, my lives in front of strangers, it shows or whatever. I tell people what I'm going through. I'm gonna be a human in front of you. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna allow other people to tell me what is and isn't appropriate about my story. And I had to stop doing that myself. Um, and, and I think what really keeps me in it is the work I've done with young people knowing that that like that that black boy that I was getting guns drawn on me at 13 and a lot of black boys have been that unfortunately yeah. a lot of us so so much so that we don't think it's a problem and it's until I started to hear my story honestly that I realized it was a problem like bro that, that's not it's not okay yeah like that it may have been normalized but I realized how much of of that I had to internalize for me to make it okay, for that to be okay for black boys. So it's like when I when I share that stuff, it's like, nah, bro, this is what I'm learning right now. Um, it's not necessarily just a trauma because it's not just trauma in this book. It's it's like I'm also learning, like, bro, us being from the hood ain't this thing that we got to shake off us everywhere we go. We got to be ashamed of everywhere we go. We don't have to change the way we talk. Despite how people treat you, they actually understand exactly what you said. You okay. can actually be just as on your square as everybody else is without changing the way you dress, changing the way that you talk. If your resume is solid and your your business is solid, then that's just what it is, you know? So it's 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 not just the trauma, it's the totality of the story. Right. I so outside I, I will say that watching you on the other podcast gives um Gives a, a a different level of insight, but it's not like all your create, you know, like your your creative company, like you're not the one pushing that. Right. Um, but with your other work, I do hear a lot of a lot of you can be, you know, who you are. But I guess I'm wondering what what is next and what do you what do you want to do out out outside or either next in this? So now you have another book um under your belt. And I guess I wonder. Because I, I've seen it. I know exactly what you're talking about. Sometimes the way that I talk, it used to make me uncomfortable because I don't know a lot of things. I wish my vocabulary was bigger. You know what I'm saying? I started, I, I still literally get the word of the day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And even <laughs> if I just understand it better than I can say it, it, it just makes me feel better, you know? But I also understand that's a gift because everybody don't need people talking at, at this level. Some people need to, you know? Um, but also I stopped talking about that. You know what I'm saying? I, I stopped talking about the, oh, you don't have to, you know what I mean? And so for Sexual Essentials, the the first brand, I felt a lot of sharing me. And I feel like this show is different because it's not, it's built off the back of that, but it was a thing that was next for me. And so I wonder what is, what is your next? It's a lot of next and a lot of now. Uh, working on my own podcast, uh, bringing that to life. What do you want to see differently in in podcasting? Depth. Okay. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I'm new to this whole space and, and stuff like that. So whatever depth I don't see is because I didn't search for it. I'm not going to pretend that there is a lack of depth in the podcast world. It's just that my exposure to it has been entertainment over effectiveness. Um, or or subbing effectiveness for entertainment uh, in a lot of ways. And I see the power in these platforms and what they could do for people. And so rather than talk about what it could do for people, I'm going to do it for people and do it for myself because I am people, you know. Um, so really just providing the space that moves people and helps people grow um, and equips them with tools that they can use to empower other people. As um, you've spoken before on, you know, meeting with your therapist and things like that, 
what has therapy done for you? And I would like to know before you got into therapy, were you always an advocate for it? Or what what was that process like? And around when did that chi- time change? I know that the the um, the narrative is that, oh, black people don't do therapy, but actually hella black people is hella in the therapy now. Yeah. So your story may not even cool. Like, nah, I always thought, you know, you have the gift with kids. So I never know. You might be like, nah, therapy always been cool with me. I don't know. So um, would you talk like talk to the points of um, you getting into therapy and what it's done for your life as well as even if you don't have a major problem going in your life, how it what it does and how it shows up for you as a you know, as a resource, especially as a black man? I'm pretty sure uh, as far as I can remember, I've always been pro therapy. Good for you. Um, Love that. I, don't, I don't think I was ever really one of the people like, oh, no, you got to. <laughs> what's wrong with you? You know, I. Yeah, you have your beliefs about it and stuff like that, but not to the point where I was scared of it or ever. And then at a certain point, as I started to really look at what I had gone through, I'm like, nah, I need it, bro. I don't, yeah, I gotta go at some point in my life. <laughs> it's a matter just, of when. <laughs> yeah, I just need to make sure because that ain't normal, bro. Like that don't even really make sense for somebody to have gone through and for me to act like it don't affect me just because I don't see it. It don't yes. mean it. It's not affecting me. And and honestly, getting into therapy, that's exactly what it showed me. Um, the ways it was affecting you without it, you exactly. knowing. Exactly. We. I think one thing. Uh, now that I'm in therapy. One of the things I wish would happen less is us associating therapy with trauma. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the stuff that I've formed habits around the first time wasn't a traumatic experience. It was this very small thing where I chose the most comfortable or convenient response. And that was this particular thing. And so every scenario that looked like that after, it was some iteration of this particular response. The trauma is the thing that you remember the most because it had the the biggest impact on you and probably leaves the most scars. But it was like, now that I'm, I'm talking to my therapist, I'm like, I've been doing that since I was four, huh? <laughs> so breaking patterns. And I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even know life was, I wasn't aware of good or bad back then. I was just doing right. my thing at four. Like, this is just how I started responding. Mom yelled. This is what I chose to do to not get yelled at. I've been doing it ever since. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's mom yelling. My boss yells, I do the same thing. The coach yells, I do the same thing. My girl yells, I do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? And and talking to my therapist, um, especially I was, I did this actual um, procedure or program, if you will, called EMDR. It's like a- I did it. Yeah, it's so- it's, that's a lot of work at one time, um, and you really get to the meat of a lot of stuff. And you get the meat, potatoes, ain't no dessert. You get yeah, prune you juice. Yeah, you kind of end up left there and too. a laxative for the next few weeks. <laughs> you know, you you gonna be <laughs> going through the exactly. So it was <laughs> being able to get to the root cause of things that let me know everything is not always as complex and dirty and deep and like we. The way people preach like healing and improvement now is let's unpack less. Everything don't need to be unpacked. Sometimes you realize that bag, that whole bag ain't even mine, bro. I'm about to just throw that out because it, it's you not just been carrying to somebody else's stuff yeah. that's not yours. And yeah. I'm sure they don't want it back. They probably don't even know that they gave it to me. So I'm going to just toss just it out. you just hanging on. Yeah. Exactly. So it, yeah, it's, it's been good. Um, I, I love that for you. Um, EMDR for me was everything that it was may not have been for you. And I don't wish it upon anyone. (laughs) EMDR is a a form of um, therapy that it takes you back to the moment. Yeah. And so it, it, it ties into even like the hypnotherapy that I tried later, like all the things that I tried, like it, it, one thing at a time, you know, they got me into believing different avenues of like healing outside of the church um, and just being a good person. And for me, EMDR, it made me almost throw up and regurgitate and, and purge everything that, that was there. Um, it, it was a lot of repeating what happened in detail and exercising your memory because there are a lot of things that we took away very much so in the past. Yeah. And so it's almost like someone asking you to tell the story over and over and over again until new details come out, until you can figure out what, the pro- what problems were created and also until there is no more emotional response when you... Yep. do it. And so it was a necessary step for me to even get to this point where I can have the show and and sometimes my eyes just tingle a little bit versus me just ball out crying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think it was a huge 
I know that it was a huge part of me becoming the mother, you know, that I am now, that I can't take everything personally or, you know, any of that. But EMDR is absolutely that shit, but it's some thug shit. I don't care what nobody said. Like, that's some... (sighs) I started in my second week. (laughs) You just don't write it. Like, second or third week. Because I told her, um, by the time I actually got to therapy... I, I had already been doing work on myself. I had been meditating for close to seven, eight years already. I had been journaling already. I was ready to do the work. And frankly, I told her when I came in, Doc, I'm sick of my bullshit. Like, I, it has to be something else. It can't be weed. It can't be women. I can't buy my way out of what's going on. Like, as a matter of fact, when I really knew, I had a salary job. I was I was teaching. Uh, my money was good. My situation was was good. And I'm like, nah, bro, it's something that's not there because the circumstances, cool. It's nothing else I could do it's right me. now. It's something but yeah, in me like that the don't only feel. thing that I could do is like be rich. And then what? I'm going to just and be buying more nothing. shit. Yeah, that's it why I'm like, nothing. there's nothing that could, it's something is, is going on with me that I need to get to the bottom it. of. And so when the opportunity uh, came up to actually get a therapist out of network, because I hate how people. I was gonna, I was gonna get into that. We were gonna get into the okay. To well, the steps, we can, so. yeah, we can we can get there when we get there. Point is, because um, <laughs> that's a whole nother beast. Go, getting a the therapist. I've, I've always been supportive of it, and I know people. It sounds cliche. A lot of times, when you really get down to the work, you'll find out the cliches are true most times. And this one is too, bro. Therapy changed my life. Um, I haven't even been in it a year, and it's it's changing my life. Yeah. And, and that, that process is so, it is a purge because the things that's not meant for you, you realize they're not aligned for whatever reason, whether it was you, whether it was your parents, yep. somebody, it don't matter. If it ain't yours, let it go. That's At the it. end of the day, if it's not for that's you, it. it don't got, because we don't all have the same purpose or the same assignment or any of that, which means you don't have the same burdens or trials or obstacles or issues. Yep. Everybody doesn't have anxiety. I know that it's, we say that every, you know, we all got to, you not might true. not. So yeah. stop, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, I was similar to you. Um, I did not find a therapist in network. I paid out of pocket for EMDR. Um, and it was like $150 a session. And to me, I was like, do you know how fucked up I am? We ain't got no time. Baby, run it up. Yep. Like, I need I need the strongest therapist you got. Like, what yep. is the... And we went in there and I said, look, I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, this is my budget. I need to get some stuff done. And she fired me by the time we were done. But first session, she was like, well, this is what I'm... I said, well, she's like, we're not gonna do today. But once I came in, I said, look, this is what's going on. And I just told her the whole story. She was like, this is okay. Like, we, we can do that. Um, but, yeah, we got we got started on that second session. And when I did, I was in the bed for, like, three days after the very first one. I was in the bed for three days. Hey, come get this baby. I I, I can't help you. Get somebody else to do it. I, I was purging. Uh-huh. And I was like, but this ain't it. So um, I do. I, we are going to talk about, um, we can add that maybe into the advice. But I do sure. want to talk about that. But I want to keep hearing more from you. Um, when did you become proud of yourself? Are you proud of yourself? If I'm going to be frank, uh, a lot of me being proud of myself is still conditional on on how I'm performing in the world. Mm. Um, because you always taught well, it starts with capitalism. Like you always start to be in motion. The next thing, the next thing, work, 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 yeah. work, grind, hustle. I don't look up a lot. Um, historically, let me say I, I've I've had a history of not looking up, and so the things that other people are proud of me for, I just threw in the bag with everything else and and just kept moving along. You know, so it's certain things that I'm looking for in life that I haven't yet achieved. And so it's hard to really say I'm proud of myself if I haven't checked those things off my list. Uh, whereas everything else is just like, yeah, I mean, that's cool. That's what's up. Um, and again, sometimes I miss it, right? Sometimes my focus is not where, where it should be. So are there things that I'm proud of? Yeah, for sure. Um, do they all Are they all attached to, I apologize for cutting you off. I, I, can you clarify are those attached to hitting certain like measurable goals or more so a changing you like I've been in therapy for you I'm proud of myself for that or what do you like they more quantitative qualitative um both um and that's what I mean like when I say my head be down sometimes it, it really be down and do you see yourself 
it's it's becoming clear these days. Um, just understanding who I don't have to show up in the world as is is making that picture clear. But yeah, I you know I won't tiptoe around it, bro. Like I I come from the slums, like, and a lot of my fam is still that. I go back home. I'm going to the hood to see my family. Like yeah. it's like my I don't necessarily come from one of them families where I grew up in the hood and my family started doing better or such and such got a better job and we moved. Like, nah, nigga, it's, it's still that. So, like, until I can change certain situations for certain people, you know what I'm saying, it'd it be hard to feel the best about it. Like, when I did that TED Talk, as happy as I am that I did it, I couldn't afford to give my parents tickets to that. You know what I'm saying? So my fam didn't get to see me tell this story that has everything to do with us. I told it in front of a bunch of white people, you know, which <laughs> like, hey, yeah, that shit. Like I, I did a TED talk, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's like I'm I'm about more than just the appearance of success. And right now I look very successful, like, and that's great. But again, it's certain things I wanna do, certain people I wanna take care of, and that that to me is when I get to sit down and be like, All right, bro, like job well done, my nigga, let's let's rest. Do you think that as a man, you have difficulty. Do you do you know how to rest? Do you what what is rest to you? Because what I found is that the the, the rest that you talk about came at the end. Um, and so I guess I'm wondering how do you pour into yourself and how are you kind to yourself during this process? Where how are you incorporating the self care to 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 pour into you to fuel you? You know what I mean? So that the energy recycles through you. Um, so that you can do what you feel needs to be done or that you desire to do? Uh, I do shit for the little kid in me, for real. Like, I go to the movies. I feel um, that. I go get myself some ice cream, pizza and shit. Play video <laughs> games for a little bit, you know. Um, but outside of that... Nothing like I, I'm, and I don't mean that in a I don't rest. I mean like I literally do nothing, as uncomfortable as it may be, and it does get uncomfortable as much as I judge myself sometimes while I'm not doing anything. Like I do nothing. Like I'm mm -hmm. not gonna read no book. I'm not gonna do none of that. I'm not gonna learn anything today. I'm actually going to just be at the house. Um, I feel I love a do nothing day. Like that. That's gonna be it. And so that that's recent for me. You know wasn't often that I would give myself the opportunity to not do nothing and not beat myself up on those days. But more recently, I'm understanding rest is something that's part of the process and not something that I have to earn. So when I put rest at the end of something, it's really just me taking that moment to look over a completed goal list and not make another goal, but just to sit with the fact that this goal list is actually completed. Yeah. Do you feel that, um, because you've, you've talked about rest being difficult, um, do you feel that rewards are also a difficulty for you? Do you think that you straddle the fence and wanting to reward yourself because, like you've talked about, just not, not being able to do certain things for other people, so until you can do those things, do you not reward yourself in a certain way? Like, I have to stay like this until I can do this, like do help so-and-so from, you know, from home or things like that. Like, how do you balance that? I know for me, it was very difficult to do, to enjoy life in a, if a, in a different city while my siblings were still at home with my parents. That yeah. was very difficult for me. But also I know that what I'm here to do is gonna make them opportunities not to fix things, but if they wanna move here, there's a job for them that I can provide them. You know what I'm saying? And I realized it required me to be happy and for me to give myself the things. And even with my son, I, it requires me to be, to love my life, to, to love on me, to give him a certain, you know, I can't give him something that I don't have. I can't give him happiness or any of that. Like, and I, and I don't have it or even show him the way. So how do you balance with that? Like, because I know sometimes, especially 
coming from the things we come up from, somebody call you bougie real quick. Like, oh, you bougie for this. And it's like, am I or is it self-care? Like, I remember when I started getting facials, my the verbiage even around that was like, oh, you hella bougie. To make sure I don't look like a snake in five years, bro. Like, I don't, I don't wanna <laughs> like we be talking about how good black men, black women look like that that's water, water stress boundaries, a little, you know, like that's that's work. But yeah. you know, how how do you battle battle with that? Daily, like everybody else. Um it's again like a lot of things that some people look at as success. A lot of things that other people look at is like, oh yeah, you need to celebrate that. If that's not what's on your goal list, I don't give it the same value as everybody else. And it's not to say that again, it's not to say that's a good or bad thing. Cause I I got my ways, you know. I, I'm at certain things that I'm improving on, certain things I'm I'm gaining a new perspective on. You still in the process. You yeah, know? but but it's just like if if you would have told me a year ago, like, oh yeah, you're gonna get eighty thousand followers, I would have said, like, all right, cool, like great. That's not what I was gunning for, like not directly. Had it been a consequence of, of some other shit, like, you know, then maybe the value will be different for me. Um, I've since taken it as, okay, well, you can use this like you use everything else, so go ahead. But it's just like, again, walking in, if this ain't on my list, like if I visualize something and something come in that's not a part of what I, then I'm, I'm gonna have to- make it important. Yeah, routine. like I'm gonna I'm have, not immediately, I'm gonna have to study it for a minute and, and take some assessments. So um, yeah, I, I balance it like everybody else. And sometimes I get it wrong. Sometimes I, I get it right. Hey, you guys, it's your host, Samaya. If you're enjoying the topics over here, honestly, I think you'd love the topics over on my learning platform. I have some private interviews over there with some amazing guests. I've interviewed Mr. Marcus. Yes, that's the porn star. Passion Jones, who brought on her husband and her boyfriend, and even had some girls night conversations with Medina from Cocktails, as well as Mila from Good Moms, Bad Choices. That conversation was amazing. We did some examples of our dirty talk, and let's just say you need to check it out. Don't just take my word for it. Make sure that you click the link below and sign up today. There are over 250 workshops, classes, interviews, and so much more. All right, now back to the show. So one of the things that, that always comes up, um, especially when you're on these episodes or your talks is coming out and, you know, on the internet period, it's just men and women, right? Of course. <laughs> I want to start off and we're, and we're just, we're switching um, stations a little bit here. All right. All right? Sure. So we can talk about some deep shit and that was real great. We appreciate you. Wear my, wear my palette. All right. Yeah. Wet it up. Now let's talk about some men and some women shit. All right. Get a little poly shit. Let's, let's, let's get into that a little sex. You know, um, I want to know if you could give women I, I give you up to three up to three pieces of advice to understand about men um or, or what you need to understand and wrap your mind around is in this is not an open-ended this is not a suggestion this is something you need to understand as a man what would you want it what would you want it to be appreciate that man outside of the ways he show up for you um like I've been in situations where I'm appreciated as her boyfriend and that's it. Like the rest of me that exists outside of the part that I share with her doesn't seem to have it's not as, as much value. Yeah, like when my feelings aren't beneficial to her and a lot of and a lot of space for them. Mm -hmm. When what I'm interested in and ambitious about isn't necessarily directly beneficial to us or her. And as much support for that, like, like, ain't, ain't really gung ho for that. So it's just like listening to my guys. Their provision is appreciated. Their protection is appreciated. Um, you know, all of that, the things that they can perform in, and the things that they do are appreciated. But the whole man, the person, isn't often getting that same look and, and appreciation, and, and being given the same space. And so, if if I was to say anything, I would say that. You know, again, just understand that this is a whole individual that you're dealing with and to see all of that and value all of that. And if you can't, like, that's cool. You feel me? Um, let that man go. Yeah. You know, let 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 him be with somebody who can appreciate the the totality of, of who he is. If you can only rock with 30 percent of him, bro, it might be a woman who dying for the rest of what he got going on. Yeah. 
Let that man go, bro. I found that women who... Let me say this. I've been, I've been trying to get this sentence right for days because I want to talk about it. I just got to take your time. All right. So who men look up to, What the men that men look up to, and the men that women look up to look very different. I've noticed that because you got the Derek Jacksons out there, you know, that, that, you know, you should do this to get a man. You shouldn't be that to get a man. And you hear these folks on these podcasts talking about some, you know, in marriage, it shouldn't be this. And then I'm like, but you're not married. You're, you're not married. Uh, or, but when you look at men, the, the, the men that I see is like, this is a, a man. And, and as, as you said, as a whole, the, the men as a whole that I'm like, this is a man and imperfect beautiful man you know what I'm saying and, and women are very unperfect everybody's unperfect we know that but I'm talking about a man that is a a great man despite like not measuring him up against anything just overall a, a great man like this is the type like this is gonna be a great dad this is gonna be you know what I'm saying and and within his imperfection who he studies to be a better man better man is totally different than the books and quotes and follows and pages that the women be following and it's like, wh where is the disconnect there? Because what for me, what is given is like, who? Help me out here, because I, 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 I need to. I think the dudes be following, especially now. I think they doing the same thing, and it's not to knock the people they follow, because I think it's much more about the follower than the, than the person giving the message. A lot of these folks pander, and a lot of people want to be pandered too. I think um, women just get pandered to more and get pandered to, have been getting pandered to longer. Uh, whereas men, you got like the passport bros, you got like Kevin Samuels, like all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. These men delight in seeing women insulted. The same way these women delight in being validated and affirmed and told they not the problem and none of these men are worth <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's all of these folks is pandering to how people feel. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these the the guys who subscribe to them platforms don't know how to say that they don't feel valued and would like to feel appreciated and safe in a relationship. So they yeah. let somebody else say it for them. The same way these women have always wanted to be affirmed and appreciated and valued. So they not getting that. So they let one of these men say it for them. Now I, I think to to bring truth to what you're saying. The man, the specific guy that you're talking about, yes, very different role models. But the woman that's on the same thing that actually wants to do work, that actually is is being honest with herself, she not following yeah. Derek Jackson. She not. And following. it's just the name of the day, you know. Yeah, like, ain't no sauce on you. Whatever you got nah, going on. I don't. Uh -huh. I don't care, bro. If you want to take, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't, when I don't know you in real life, I'm gonna throw out a name out there because this is what your platform was built off of, and then you did all of this stuff. Yeah, and so that's at what the, I, and the, exactly. The fact is, you you was preaching one thing, did another. We ain't talking about imperfect people. We talking exactly. about the fact that, like you said, you you talking to the shit that women want to hear, but at the end of the day, you only hitting on accountability a little bit, or you only hitting on the good points, not really the working steps. You you're you're giving a good talk. You, you're giving a great talk, and I. Women spend money more. I think that's the difference. <laughs> Do women spend money like women drug spend dealers? Money more. Men out. <laughs> men out about to go buy a Kevin Samuel's card game. <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah. Like like we not about to go buy. You know what I'm saying? Whatever dudes. Uh, five step manual to be a better man. Like we <laughs> dudes not. It's you got to really. I have. Yeah. I have to have heard from another man. That whatever this is is valid <laughs> I before it. I go purchase. Yeah. Whereas like women, just as a consumer, if I can make it sound good, if I can make it look good, if I can make it, if I can package it a certain way, oh yeah, like she gonna cop. So it's, it doesn't make business sense even for an right. opportunist because that's what most of these people are is just opportunists. Right. It don't make sense for me to go somewhere where there's no opportunity. I know I'm gonna be able to entertained to a certain degree but like Kevin Samuels that worked for him because like he was an image consultant he 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 could get some other dudes to cop if he seemed like a valuable guy that's in the position to stomp on women and stuff like that because some dudes want that so when he say like hire me to improve your image some man probably a bite for that some man probably started putting on a suit 
and talking crazy about women because Kevin Samuels, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like he needed, but most men not going. Most women, they definitely, they definitely gonna spend that. They're gonna spend it bread. So I also want to talk about because I know you probably seen the line when they say, you know, if you poly, you probably ugly. You probably look like this. And I be seeing it on Twitter. And it it be some folks in the car, and I ain't saying they my cup of tea. They might be somebody's cup of tequila. I have no idea. But it, it don't look good. And I'm like, okay. It don't. It, it, don't. it don't look good. And I, and I leave it alone because I'm like, this is what y'all choosing. But I need to let the world know right now. To, what what is your what is your relationship style or what do you I'm a, label? I'm ethically non-monogamous. And you know what I heard someone say the other day is that they had to take off the ethical. They said because who said that it's unethical if I choose to be non non-monogamy is not unethical. We say it for the other people who assume this, that this is true. You know, and this I, I love I loved that perspective. But I just want to say you know I want to say that you know to y'all. But ethically non-monogamous, which means that. You um, and do you consider yourself polyamorous? I would only say no because it's not a requirement for me. Like that's not my. I'm fluid when it comes to relationships. The ethics is way more important than more than anything. monogamy. Yeah. So I'm I'm I I feel like I relate more to polyamory because I have the ability to love multiple people. It doesn't sure. mean that I always will, always do. Hell, I've been married in a one-on-one -on -one relationship. I've most of my serious relationships have been more one-on-one -on -one than anything. And like you said, it goes back to the the ethics of it all. Yeah. Uh, but I always come forth with who I am. Like this is who I am, which that's means fair. it is possible for me. I need you to know that I'm not a person that's like, oh, you the end all be all. If I love you, I do love you. Someone else coming into that doesn't change that for me. But I need you to know. You need to know I'm bisexual. I think you need to know that I eat coochie. Like I I think you need to know. I, I think yeah, I should. That's valid. You know what I'm saying? So just because I am bisexual don't mean I need to be with a woman or whatever. So I, I feel like that that was important to me, realizing that that's how I say, okay, I'm polyamorous because of these things. Um, I want to know what do you think is, um, what are what are some of the biggest benefits that monogamous couples or people can learn from polyamorous people? Or what is the... What is the the thing for you? I I we, we went live the other day and we talked about it, but you know, I, I need it was a great conversation. Have an ability to custom build your relationship. Cause I think monogamy come with a whole lot of expectations that people just subscribe to and never thoroughly discuss. Mm -hmm. Like this is what I think a relationship's supposed to be between two people. This is what you think it's supposed to be. And we never really sit down and decide between the two of us, this is what a relationship looks like. When you rocking with multiple people and it's like four of us or three of us or five of us, you know what I'm saying? Even though we not all in relationship, actually, especially because we not all in relationship right. together because you got that piece over there. I got these two pieces and one of my pieces got a piece. We got to <laughs> we gotta talk. Yeah. Like we, we actually need to get on one accord and figure out how you and I and all the relating pieces are doing this thing. Like we got to make it make sense because if it don't make sense, I can't be a part of it. And I think... From what I've seen, who I've dated, because you know everybody want to be the exception to the rule. So let me <laughs> let me use my I statements. From who I've dated, a lot of folks in monogamous relationships just have a lot of expectation, and even the people who do communicate are not as good at it as they think they are. And I've been people before, so I ain't, I ain't knocking nobody. Um, so I, I think there has never been a situation where both I and the woman. Uh, uh, have been ethically non-monogamous and we haven't had a serious and thorough conversation about what that means between the two of us. Right. What they do fuck with, what they don't, and the same thing on my side. Yeah. I feel like you pay attention to the details way more when because it's like, we're just going to, you know, you go to the restaurant, they be like, build your own or you can order this, yeah. right? And so you're way more particular and even just starting off the episode with, you know, when you ask for more, you get more. I, I've, I've realized being more particular is actually getting me more things. It's getting me exactly what I'm asking for. Um, I don't I can't do cookie cutter because nothing about my life is is that what I've come from hasn't been cookie cutter. What I what I am now and where I want to be. None of it is not just the relationship part, like the money part, the you know, all of that. Um, and for and for me, it's the freedom to, to do that. I don't want to possess anybody else. And I realize for myself, when I try to possess others, I get so consumed and get off my own path that's, because, that's real. you know what I'm saying? I'm worried about what you're doing and where you at. And 
understanding that I'm not being chosen. I, I'm here with you. It's not about them choosing me or anything else. I just, like I said, I need to custom build my relationship and I, I need to tell you what I need and it may be different than you and I hold space. You know what I'm saying? For that, it don't mean, if I need you to do this for me, it doesn't have to be because you need it. And if you don't want to do that, you don't have, I'm going to be a hundred regardless. Yeah. Le learning how to, how to be alone and be alone and be happy and fulfilled and give yourself everything. Huge. And, and I think that's a, what you said definitely gave me a little more specificity in that I think one of the expectations in monogamous relationships is that you have to give me everything I give you. And I think that's such a harmful thing to go into something because, you know, reciprocity is one of the big buzzwords has been for a few years now. Yeah. Reciprocity doesn't look like you giving me back all the same things I give you. If that's the case, dating myself would be fine. <laughs> right. Like that that's enough, which I encourage everybody to do, but it's like I wouldn't need a partner if everything that I could pour was enough for me. It's like, bruh, if I'm the one who who is able to speak life and and has the words and the plans, yeah. I don't expect my lady to be the one with the words and the plans. If she is able to do that for me, big bet. But that if that's not her strength, that's not her strength. If her strength is is finance and and knowing how to make the plan and yelling at the waiter when our food is fucked up, <laughs> then that's what that's what I need her to do. Like that's that's you do that shit and that's how we pour back into each other. Like I'm not saying I I'm not suggesting codependency. I am suggesting interdependency where we as two people figure out this is where I'm strong and this is where I'm weak. This is what I need as a as a person to feel secure, to feel safe, to feel wanted and desired. This is what you need. All right, cool. I'm looking at your list. I'm going to let you know now. I don't got them. I don't got them. Where where me being ethically non-monogamous comes in and saying, if you need that, though, like if that's vital to your well-being, go get that. Because I don't want you to be without that yeah. here or at any other time. But, yeah, like it's 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 this expectation that we're all supposed to fit into these molds in order to do relationship. And to me, it shows like almost a, a lack of awareness because it's like, fam, if you was aware in yourself, fuck your partner. You don't even fit into that shit. And you're trying so hard yeah. to be this thing that you was told you supposed to be in a relationship. And it's like you could also you could always try showing up as yourself and see what that do for you. <laughs> it might fuck around and work out. Yeah, you feel me? And that usually be the secret sauce is to show up and be yourself and it just it opens doors. I feel that even to your to your to your point about, you know, if you tell me that this is what you need and I'm like, yo, I have seven out of ten of these things, um, a lot of people will be like, Okay, well that's enough. I don't want anybody to tell me that's enough. I expect more from you. I want more from you. So either you're going to give yourself these three things or the next person that you date, even when it comes to the ethically part, I look at the other type of people that um, non-monogamous people date. Because if you told me that you need these things and I provide this and that person provides the exact same thing or none of those things, then it's like... What you really doing? What What's up? Like, yeah. is there intentionality between... Because when you add more people, you add more problems as well. Facts. So being non-monogamous can go... You've seen it two ways. You got some people that's like, I'm non-monogamous, but really they want to have more sex and validate it and yep. find a way to do it without being wrong. But at the end of the day, me, I'm just as picky, like, with the people I do my business with, the ones I... Like, I literally stop fucking with the couple because of who else they decide to deal with. And I said, this person goes against all of, I, I know they go against the things that I stand for, but more so than that, they go against the things that you, you say you stand, stand for, for but yeah. because they're not doing it to you or whatever. Now that's, you think that you're not associated. I, watch who you associate with. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you a thief and just cause you ain't burglar me, like nigga don't mean that it's okay. Like that's you're real. a robber. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're a robber, and you can't just. <laughs> You're... You're... Uh, <laughs> hey, nigga. <laughs> just... You can't but be nah, doing that, real. you know. And so, just even, it, and it's so much freedom in just saying I can't do all of those things versus trying to wear every hat and trying to be every woman. I don't know what Whitney was on, but I ain't her. Uh, no, nah, that's And it's multiple personality and disorder I've, when I I've try to be to that. Be that. <laughs> I've, tr I've tried. Like, recovering people pleaser, bro. Like, came, came from an abusive household. <laughs> and and when you when you come from that and you, 
that's kind of one of the, it comes from avoidance, essentially. It's trying to avoid negative outcomes by making people happy beforehand. Mm -hmm. And getting some affection that you're just trying to get from anyone. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and so in relationship, I was that dude. Like if some shit went wrong, I'm putting it on my shoulders first. I got to come up with the plan. It's something I can do better. I can show up as a better man. Like, let me support more. Let me support whole time. Like, I'm damn near getting trashed. Like, not not because she's some type of terrible person, but because she not going to respect boundaries that, that I don't put in place. Right. Or boundaries that I'm always willing to move the mark on if, if it make her more comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and it's just like, because at, at a... I'm sorry that you're a robber shit pop back up. <laughs> <laughs> you're a robber. <laughs> you got, bro, that shit, that shit's too funny. <laughs> you got a. You silly. Nah, that's, you said that shit, bro. Like. <laughs> Hey, you guys, hope you're enjoying the show. I just had to stop by and let you know that if you have not ordered your thigh high socks from Sexual Essentials, you're behind. I know how it feels to buy lingerie and you say, ooh, I'm going to be real sexy and put it on. And it's sitting in the back of your drawer collecting dust. Let me tell you, the thigh high socks are just so convenient. They're super sexy and they're actually comfortable. So instead of feeling like you have to make that large leap into lingerie, try the thigh high socks. Your partner gets to see you looking sexy as well as yourself and they're super comfortable. Don't forget to use our code NJASP for 15% off. Tell your friends and make sure that you get your favorite color before they're gone. All right, now back to the show. <laughs> Look here, end us off with your advice to the men people pleasers because a lot of women say they're people pleasers, but I don't think people realize how much men people please. And because we didn't, we didn't, we didn't got caught up in this conversation. That way, you can just end us out and, and round us out there. No, nah, for sure. And that, honestly, that's that's where I was trying to go is to try to put some actionable on it. I was trying to alley oop it. Um, <laughs> let the first boundary you said be discipline. Um, if you disciplined, then your boundaries are less in control by you and more in control by your discipline. For instance, um, let discipline be a woman speaking to you a certain way, always yielding a certain response. It doesn't have to be this irate response, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you don't like being spoken to a certain way, discipline is you holding that same standard across the board don't let your homies talk to you like that don't let her talk to you like that don't let your sisters your cousins talk to you like that um if you like a certain standard as far as what you spend on yourself how you receive gifts because I, I know some women still wrapping pussy up for for thanksgiving uh, uh i said thanksgiving valentine's day <laughs> hey it's the same plate you had it's the same leftovers the same full um, but still wrapping that up and giving it as gifts, bro. If that's not what a gift is for you, what gifts do you give yourself? And let that be discipline, bro. Like if if you gonna celebrate yourself, be disciplined in that. If you gonna if you gonna watch film on your L's in life, be disciplined with that shit. And like again, like your boundaries will start to answer to your discipline and answer to the shit that you consistent in and not how you feel. Cause if we feeling shorty, we'll move some boundaries around, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like now, now you said you were spending time with the homies and she done called you and you ain't disciplined, bro. Let that be your first boundary. Absolutely. I um I need you guys to understand that having having a man on the show that that's willing to be vulnerable about, look, I don't like this and I, I do and things like that. If you're not getting that much push pushback or particular answers in your relationships, it's there may be a chance that he's not opening up at all. Or if you feel like, oh, my partner doesn't talk. Men absolutely talk and they have a lot to say. Either there's not a need for them to repeat themselves because you get it, or either you don't get it and so they're not going That's to repeat the themselves. So if you're not clear and you can't be specific about he likes this or doesn't like that, or... Fellas, don't repeat yourself too many times. But again, hold that boundary. Hold that boundary. I, I I had a friend who his and he's a, he's very he he splurges on himself and love I I love it, and he was with a woman and she she fumbled his birthday. He he was at odds ends for months because he was like, "Am I tripping? Like 
this is a great relationship. But at the end of the day, if that's important to you and that's how you show up for her birthday and it's been expressed and it's what I want and you've checked the marks of, you know, then no, hold that boundary that that didn't make you feel special, that didn't make you feel important. And men go through the exact same emotions as us. But ladies, my advice I'm going to give is to stop discussing with your emotions. No one is entitled to listen to how you feel. That is a courtesy. Um, you should ask for the things that you want and ask them if they have space to listen to you. Otherwise, talk to your therapist or your homegirls. But nobody needs to hear how you feel about them all the time. All the time. You don't. And it's not a... I'm going to say as a dude to that specific point, like, stop having them conversations expecting us to feel how you feel. I think a lot of a lot of men do a lot of emotional labor that goes overlooked just because we don't pick up the feeling that our, our lady is trying to convey. It's like, bro, I don't have to be mad because you mad. I hear everything you that said you saying. don't like this. Okay. Yeah. I, won't I heard do you. that then. It didn't evoke the same response and I care about you. So because exactly. I care, I'm just gonna not do it. Versus a lot of women will talk and say, Well, I'm sorry I made you feel that way and and things like this. And Steph, I see you. I'm about to wrap it up. We're about to go home, man. Eh? All right, past collections played around. They about to kick us up out of here and cut off the lights. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and so, um, Damn, fucking with her. Now, <laughs> then Robert popped up in my head again. I'm it, <laughs> You're a robber. <laughs> and so, um, but fellas, look, look for discipline in the woman as well, not just in yourself. Look at her discipline when she is upset at you and how she responds to you and talks to you and do you feel berated or, and this is not coming from me at a high place, it's coming from a place of a woman that's made mistakes. And I think that you don't even realize you're doing it because you feel and you feel like that entitles you to talk to people a certain way and it's not. And fellas, check that shit from jump. Check it. You know what I'm saying? Be very clear about how you want people to treat you. And if it feels difficult, sometimes you're putting new boundaries in place in certain places. But the one who was the catalyst for the problem is the one that you may not have put those boundaries in place for. For me, I was changing my life. I was doing double time the work. And I was wondering why I still wasn't getting past. It was because I was still dealing with my parents. Yep. But I did not want to let them go. I, I, I love Fellas. them. I, I miss them all the time. But for me, once I let that go and just work through that pain instead, all these other things cleared up for me because now I've actually held a yep. real boundary. So with that being said, we're going to move on really quickly. Thank you for joining our advice today. <laughs> all right. Spiritual tip of the day is being more intentional with your high. Uh, we got this one from the girl plug. Uh, she is actually an Atlanta plug for women. She started her business to help women get, you know, her, her tweeds, uh, safely. Yeah, and I love that. Yeah. I think that is, that is very amazing. Um, so we would drop her link below. Uh, but being more intentional with your high and being more control of it, not letting it just be a, a thing that takes you out of earth or whatever, no matter how earthy it is, we can get addicted to anything. Facts. Or especially things that help us disconnect and not feel. And so she was talking about uh, meditating while you're high and visualizing, especially because your mind can get so, yeah. you know, crazy and interactive. Take that time to make a Make a, um, help me out with a word here, more like a, a purposeful. Purposeful. A. Uh, Ashtray. Cause you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that. <laughs> Decide what you want to see before. Set your intention beforehand. Stop chuckling at me. My dog is chuckling at me. Um, setting your intention beforehand before you get high. So that way your mind goes there and visualizes right. and. Proud of me for bring, trying to bring it home. Yeah, because th <laughs> this versus what you what you just said, <laughs> you wouldn't, we wouldn't lost go charades, get that. bro. Yeah, the charades game is lost. Oh goodness. Um, sometimes I struggle with the words, so getting better with talking and trying to get it out and just being patient with myself versus getting frustrated is growth for me. So love that for myself. Um, Trip, thank you so much for joining me today for being vulnerable, thank you. sharing, allowing me a chance to listen, um, and for talking to me. Sure. So um, congratulations on your second book. I don't know what it means to you, but it, it means a lot to me to see men talk in a way that I, I would love to be able to express myself. And I, I love that. And I it, I just, I love it. I love to hear people talk and um, the way that you express things um, and the way that you hold your ground, despite the surroundings that you may be in and using it as opportunity to move yourself forward and still holding true to your standards in any room that you're in, I think is very beautiful. And I'm very proud of you. 
Thank you. Um, so thank you for allowing us to host the book release party for a ghetto called Eden. Take us home. Tell them where to find you so we can get up out of here. I'm on everything. Uh, Trip Fontaine, <laughs> T-R-I-P-P-F-O-N-T-A-N-E. Uh, the book is available Ghetto called Eden dot square dot site. I'm a point down here. Hopefully mm -hmm. they put some shit down there. It's gonna be there. right if there. If not, I'm gonna look like a jackass when y'all watch this. <laughs> Either way it go, bro. Like it's all spelled correctly because we read and shit. You feel me? Um, holla right. at your dog. We good business. Appreciate you guys so much for joining us again. Make sure that you and when we say down here, I just want to specify. Look at the captions. Okay, when we put the audio up, it's a whole bunch of discount links in there. Fifty percent off some stuff. Thigh high socks, all that good stuff. Um, anyways, I love y'all. Peace. We will see y'all next time. And thank you so much for joining us for another episode.